Okay, so I dropped by Mid Journey's office hours last night and I came away with six things that I thought might be interesting for those of you who missed it. One of those being an exciting update to 3D, but for those of you who are 3D artists, it comes with a huge caveat. So I think we'll save it to the end of the video and kind of really dig into it. But for now, let's kick things off the same way Mid Journey did with Office Hours and talk a little bit about version six. So quickly with V6, while they did say they had plans to originally release it last month, as they were kind of looking into the final renders for that version, they kind of didn't really meet the expectations for what they feel they could call a major release. So they took a step back and kind of looked around for what they said were low hanging fruits, maybe an area that they could really dive into and kind of call that the cornerstone of the release. And so as they tested a bunch of different areas, they kind of realized that fortunately they all kind of worked out and they can all kind of be packaged into that major release. Unfortunately, that does mean we have to wait a little bit longer for that release, but it does sound like it'll be a big update. They kind of described it as not as big as a V3 to V4 jump, but bigger than V4 to V5. So that is exciting that we will have a big release. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait a little bit longer. But until V6, they did comment that they will have a few more kind of exciting things for version five, maybe in like a 5.3 or 5.4. So the two things that they did talk about for version five kind of work in tandem in kind of an exciting way, actually, where on one side, they're going to be releasing a much less opinionated version five. We already have raw, but according to Mid Journey, they still feel like outputs in version five are highly opinionated. So they will be dialing back even further and giving us more of kind of a vanilla output. And at the same time, are introducing something that sounds very exciting to me, which is some sort of form of aesthetic personalization system, which they liken to a Meyer Briggs test where you could fill out some sort of test or questionnaire, about the tastes and styles that speak to you directly. And it would give you back some sort of personal code, which I think when combined with that more vanilla output can really help us define our styles better and be able to get back to them much more quickly. And they kind of compared it to when they originally had a photo toggle mode where you could just toggle it on and make sure you only get photorealistic outputs if that's your thing or leave it off if you really like more of an illustrative style. They did promise that it would be much more extensive with a wide range of styles, including the ability to dial up or dial down that influence on the output. What I think is really exciting about this is it allows for better collaboration. Maybe you're working together with a team and putting together mood boards for a game or a movie. You can just share this code and make sure you're all creating in a specific style or within a range of a style. And, and I think it's also exciting for communities like ours, where if I develop a specific style or a look that you all like, I could just share that code with you and you can apply it to different subjects or settings without having to reverse engineer every single prompt I do, which vary greatly between different visuals. Okay, so let's jump past V5 now and look more into the V6 era where Mid Journey mentioned they're looking at more upscaler technologies, which is very cool. They are exploring options of actually dialing down that first set of generations after you input a prompt to something more like 512 by 512. Currently, those first renders are 1K, but they mentioned they wanted to focus on getting as larger grids, maybe a 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 to give us more options on that first level. And really, we only need kind of that 512 resolution to understand if we kind of like that thumbnail direction. And then with these new upscale technologies be able to get something more like a 2k with a lot higher consistency one of the community questions did point out that they used to do this but the upscales were very different than the thumbnails and they did acknowledge this but they promised that the upscale technologies would help us avoid sort of those artifacts where at a thumbnail size it was able to get away with kind of cheating in certain areas and as it upscaled and filled in some of those gaps they did unfortunately look a little wonky, but the upscaler technologies supposedly are looking perfect and you wouldn't really have any sort of quality difference between the thumbnail and the larger size. So I am more than happy to lower that initial resolution with that larger grid. It sounds actually really helpful as long as those upscales do keep that one-to-one -one feeling from the thumbnail to that larger size. And it does sound like the upscaler technologies will allow that. So that's super exciting. Okay, so real quick before we get to 3D, they did mention a lot about their website, which is a complete redesign, mostly I think for performance and user experience. I think we all have realized that Discord is not really designed for this, where things just get lost. They just get fed way up the feed, things get lost in threads, and it just really isn't conducive to organizing or sifting through past generations, especially at the volumes Mid Journey is allowing us to generate. So pretty excited for that website. They say it's much quicker than the current one, which I don't know for you all, but for me, tends to be incredibly slow and I can't really find images that I'm searching for. So in the first phase, they're gonna be rolling out kind of something that's more focused on discovery and sorting and maybe larger grids for viewing past images. And in the second phase, they'll be porting over a lot of the more generation focused features. And over the long term, I think it kind of sounds like that they're gonna be moving away from Discord. They did say that at first it'll kind of have feature parity, but maybe in the long run, 
the website will allow them to do things that sort of Discord doesn't let them. So that will be coming soon. It sounds like the first phase of that is just around the corner. As soon as they drop that, I'll be sure to keep you guys updated. But for my favorite topic of the session last night, they did talk about 3D. So let's jump into that, including that caveat that I mentioned. They did mention upfront that the reason 3D has been taking so long compared to the strides they've been making in 2D is that they just simply lack the data of 3D objects. They kind of half joked that they need maybe a fleet of drones to scan the world and to gather all this data, but they did have some tests internally on the data they have right now this week that they said was very exciting and very promising. And they did say that they have 100% confidence now that with the data they have, they will be able to get 3D with what they say is virtually no quality loss from what we're currently seeing in 2D, which if true is absolutely exciting unless you're looking to export meshes. And I think that for most people, this won't really matter that much, right? I think for most people, what they want to do with Midjourney is just to be able to get cool images out of it. I think maybe for 3D artists who were hoping for mesh exports, maybe we were dreaming a little bit. They did say that maybe eventually that'll be the case, but what they're really prioritizing right now is getting really nice images out of Midjourney and the 3D is kind of there just to give the ability to sort of get parallax or to move the camera around and to get a different perspective on the image. And since that's their focus, they're really not optimizing for things like say clean topology, things that we would really need out of mesh export. So they said that while you can export meshes, it really is going to be crude and really would only be helpful for things like maybe block-ins or prototypes or mock-ups of a scene. They did say that there's no reason they wouldn't be able to get to a stage where they have clean AAA quality mesh exports, but only if the market demands it. And I can kind of see where they're coming from. I imagine that the vast majority of their users wouldn't even really know what to do with a high quality mesh. They really only want to get high quality images out of it. And I think that optimizing for things like the quality of aesthetic and the ability to move around the scene for most people will be a huge jump forward from what we're seeing in 2D. Where right now we're kind of just limited on different axes, right? We can pan to the left and we can pan to the right or in and out, but we can't really rotate around. So I think that this will actually be a huge update, even if, Maybe for 3D artists, this wasn't what we were kind of hoping for as sort of that silver bullet for prototyping where we can just render an image in mid-journey and get out at least maybe a high-ish quality scene. I think it's sounding like it's going to be especially crude. I think for now, it is kind of what we should have expected, even if our hopes were a little bit higher. I am very excited to play with it. This was actually my first mid-journey office hours, and I was pleasantly surprised. They were a lot more transparent than I thought they would be, and they did answer very directly all of the community questions. It was a bit longer than expected, so if you found this helpful and you don't really have time or don't plan to sit in on office hours in the future, I will be dropping videos like this whenever the updates are kind of worth sharing with you all. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm an entirely new channel. I don't imagine YouTube will be recommending my videos yet. And until then, I appreciate all the support as I kind of try to figure out this whole YouTube thing. This video is very different than the first two ones I released, which were more deep dives into kind of the why and how I approach my creative process of the things that you see over on Instagram. So if you find this helpful, more of those kind of quick updates, let me know. And if you kind of prefer those bigger deep dives, also let me know, because I'm still really trying to figure out the shape of this channel and kind of the content that you all find most valuable. So whether it's in the comments here or over on Instagram, I'll catch you all there. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.